SMS Chiongtat. Sorry, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I have clarification for Senior Minister of State, Amy Kaur. Uh, why don't we hold the clarifications until the end? Mr. Deputy Speaker, let me first thank members for supporting the motion and for their views and suggestions. I also want to join members in expressing my appreciation to the Elder Shield Review Committee led by Mr. Charlie Ma and the Secretariat team from the Ministry of Health. The committee's recommendations on the new Cash Shield Life Scheme are significant measures to enhance Singapore's long-term care financing and provide a stronger social safety net with our ageing population. Through risk pooling, Cash Shield Life will enhance the role of insurance helping Singaporeans meet our long-term care needs. It will add to other sources of funding for long-term care, including government subsidies, personal savings and family support, and financial assistance for the lower income. I'll touch on a few issues in my speech. First, how the features of Cash Shield Life provide better protection and greater assurance for Singaporeans. Second, how the scheme is designed to meet basic long-term care needs while remaining affordable. Third, what are, what are the support measures for existing cohorts to join Cash Shield Life? Fourth, how the scheme can remain sustainable for the longer term. And finally, the government's plans to explain the scheme and raise public awareness. Let me start with better protection and greater assurance. The Elder Shield Review Committee had engaged a large group of Singaporeans over the course of its work and received many useful feedback and suggestions. The committee had to decide which enhancements are most important and how to balance the improvements and benefits with the need to keep premiums affordable. If the benefits are not adequate, the scheme will not provide sufficient protection. On the other hand, if the benefits are very generous, premiums may become too high. We need to strike a balance, as Mr. Chris de Souza had eloquently explained. We agree with the committee that cash life payouts should be provided for life to give policyholders and their family better peace of mind. This is an improvement over the current five or six year payout duration for Elder Shield. We also agree with the committee's recommendation to raise starting payouts from $400 to $600 per month, an increase of 50%. In addition, cash to life payouts will increase gradually over time to keep pace with inflation. These features will offer better protection for policyholders compared to Elder Shield, which pays a flat rate of $300 $400 per month. If we assume that payouts increase by 2% per year, a 30-year-old who joins Cash Through Life in 2020 will receive a payout amount of $1,200 per month if he becomes severely disabled at age 67 or older, if we assume 2% increase per annum. Now, this is three times the current amount of payouts under Elder Shield 400, and there is no payout duration cap. The policyholder will receive monthly payouts of 1,200 for life if he remains severely disabled until he passes away. Next, I'll explain how Cash Through Life is designed to meet basic long-term care needs while remaining affordable. Dr. Lily Neo. Engineer Dr. Lee Biwa, Mr. Melvin Yong, and Mr. Chris D'Souza asked whether $600 per month would be enough and if payout increases can continue for life even after a claim has been made. Several members also asked whether the criteria can be relaxed so that those who are unable to perform at least two activities of daily living or ADLs could receive payouts. We understand the rationale for these suggestions, which is to provide more benefits to policyholders. The committee has also discussed these ideas, carefully considered the trade-offs 
of further increasing the payout amount and lowering the claims criterion. Versus the need to keep premiums affordable in a universal insurance scheme that caters to a broad segment of Singaporeans. To illustrate, if we raise the payout amount from $600 to $800 per month, premiums for a 30-year-old male in 2020 could increase by about one-third. If we further lower the claims criteria from two to three, sorry, from three to two ADLs, I beg your pardon, premiums will further increase by another one-third. So as a result, if we combine both changes, the annual starting premium could be more than two-thirds higher than the currently proposed premium of $206 per year. If we allow the payout amount to continue increasing for life after a claim has been made, premiums will have to increase further, possibly by another one-third. Mr. Zaino Sapari and Ms. Joan Pereira also asked if premium discounts could be given to Elder Shoe or Cash Shoe Life policyholders who do not make claims to incentivize healthy living. Now, let me explain why this is not feasible in a pre funded scheme like Elder Shoe and Cash Shoe Life. Now, Elder Shoe and Cash Shoe Life being pre funded schemes, policyholders would pay premiums when they are young and receive coverage for life. Hence, one can only confirm that a policyholder is not claiming from the scheme after the person has passed away. In computing the premiums, the actuaries have included the probability that some policyholders will not claim from the scheme because they do not become severely disabled. In other words, this has already been incorporated in the premium quantum. In view of the trade-offs, the committee recommended that Cash Life focuses supporting basic long-term care needs so that premiums can be kept affordable for all groups of policyholders. Dr. Lily Neo and Ms. Joan Pereira asked if Singaporeans who wish to have more benefits, such as coverage for less severe disability or higher payouts, and are willing to pay higher premiums, would they be able to purchase additional coverage from private insurers? And that is indeed the plan. Currently, Elder Shoe policyholders can use up to $600 per year from their Medisafe to pay for Elder Shoe supplement premiums. The Ministry of Health will work with private insurers to adapt the design of their supplements to complement Cash Shoe Life and continue to allow policyholders to use Medisafe to pay for these supplements. It is also important to remember that Cash Shoe Life payouts are not the only source of long term care financing. They will complement other financing sources such as government subsidies and assistance schemes, personal savings and family support. Singaporeans with mild or moderate disabilities and who need long-term care can tap on means-tested government subsidies for nursing home, community care and home care. There are also other government schemes such as Seniors Mobility and Enabling Fund, Pioneer Generation Disability Assistance Scheme and the Foreign Domestic Worker Grant. Let me illustrate with an example to show how the different schemes come together to support Singaporean families. If the fee for nursing home care is about $2,400 per month, a lower middle income Singaporean can receive government subsidies of about $1,400, which reduces his fee to around $1,000 per month. Now, if he receives $600 per month from Cashew Life, and utilizes $200 from his Medisafe account under the new Medisafe withdrawal scheme, he and his family will need to pay around $200 per month from their savings. Through the package of different measures, a nursing home bill of originally $2,400 reduces to about $200 of out-of-pocket expenses, or less than 10% of the original nursing home fee. Now, if this person chooses home and daycare services under the Integrated Home and Daycare Pilot Program, he can reduce his out-of-pocket expenses to almost zero through a combination of government subsidies, cash life payouts, and Medisafe withdrawals. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we recognize that there are Singaporeans who may need more financial assistance. For example, those who have little savings 
and those with low Medisafe balances. And that is why we have introduced a new elder fund scheme to provide further protection for these vulnerable groups of Singaporeans for their long-term care needs. Elder fund will add to the protection offered under existing assistance schemes like Medifund and Comcare. So Deputy Speaker, I have explained how Cashew Life is designed to keep premiums affordable for policyholders. Mr. Satyandi Supat and Mr. Ang Wei Neng asked how government will further support Singaporeans, including the self-employed or unemployed, in paying their premiums. As Minister Gunn explained in his opening speech, the government will provide means-tested subsidies of up to 30% for lower and middle income policyholders living in the property with an annual value of 21,000 or less. Uh, Ms. Jessica Tan and Mr. Satyandi Supad asked why this annual value threshold was used. Now, this threshold covers about 80% of properties in Singapore, including all HDB flats and some private properties. Uh, we use a similar set of means testing criteria for MediShield Life, and about two in three Singaporeans will be eligible for the subsidies. Now, individuals who do not meet the means testing criteria but face genuine financial difficulties in paying their premiums can apply for additional premium support. Their application will be considered on a case by case basis and the budget for additional premium support is fully funded by the government. In addition, we will provide transitional subsidies to all Singaporean citizens in the future cohorts for the first five years from scheme launch in 2020. This will help to further reduce the premium amounts of these policy holders. Ms. Melvin Yong asked why the transitional subsidies are provided only for the first five years. These subsidies aim to ease transition into cashew life for the immediate few future cohorts who will be joining the scheme from 2020. And these are the cohorts from age 30 to 40 in 2020, as well as those turning 30 between 2021 in 2024, compared to the subsequent cohorts who will join the scheme later. They have less time to prepare for the higher premiums under Cashew Life. The transitional subsidies are intended to cushion the impact for these, future co these few cohorts. The amount of subsidies will be gradually reduced over the five-year period. Cashew Life is part of our social safety net and we will ensure that no Singaporean will lose coverage due to financial difficulties and inability to pay premiums. I'd like to assure the House that with these supporting measures, most Singaporeans in the future cohorts, including those from low-income households, can cover their cash life and medishoe life premiums using their annual MediSafe contributions. They do not need to make additional cash payments. Let me illustrate with an example. And with your permission, Mr. Deputy Speaker, may I display a slide? Yes, please. Thank you, sir. Now, here we have a family where the husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. Ko, are both aged 40, and each person is earning $2,200 per month. They have two children, aged 7 and 10. So in 2020, the couple's cash life premiums will be about $27 per month in total, after means-tested subsidies and transitional subsidies. And their aggregate household medishoe life premiums, including the children, add up to around $67 per month. Now for this family, the total premiums per month for both cashew life and medishoe life is $94, which is less than a quarter of the couple's combined MediSafe contribution of almost $400 per month. But as Ms. Jessica Tan said, MediSafe is also needed for other healthcare related expenses, and that is why we have to keep a balance between the benefits and the premium quantum for cash life, while allowing policyholders to purchase supplements if they wish to do so. I'll now move on to describe the support measures for existing cohorts to join cash life. SMS Call had earlier explained why we decided not to make cash life mandatory for Singaporeans in the existing cohorts. We do want to encourage as many Singaporeans as possible to join the scheme if they are not already severely disabled, so that more Singaporeans can pool our risks together and have better protection and greater peace of mind for everyone as we age. 
Mr. Zainal Sapari asks if the government will support those who convert from elder shoe to cash shoe life. We will do so. The government will offer participation incentives of up to $2,500 to reduce their premiums and encourage participation in the scheme. We will also provide means-tested subsidies and additional premium support under cash shoe life to policyholders from the existing cohorts to ensure no one loses coverage due to financial difficulties. Associate Professor Daniel Goh asks about auto-enrollment. Sir, in 2021, Cash Shoe Life will auto-enroll current Elder Shoe 400 policyholders born between 1970 and 1979 who are not severely disabled. And these are the younger members of the existing cohorts who are currently on Elder Shoe 400. Compared to older members of the existing cohorts and those who are not on Elder Shoe 400, the quantum of their premiums to join Cash Shoe Life will be lower. The purpose of auto-enrollment is to make it more convenient for this group of Singaporeans to join Cash Shoe Life, and policyholders will receive premium subsidies and participation incentives. They will be given at least two years, up to 31st December 2023, to opt out of Cash Shoe Life if they do not wish to join the scheme. So it remains optional for them. Auto-enrollment is to make it more convenient, but it remains optional for them. Older members in existing cohorts who are born in 1969 or earlier, including those who have previously opted out of Elder Shoe, can also join Cash Shoe Life if they are not already severely disabled. We will support them if they wish to join the scheme. And unlike Elder Shoe, there is no age limit to join Cash Shoe Life. MOH will make a premium calculator available by the end of this year for existing cohorts to find out more details about their premiums. We encourage Singaporeans who are interested to join Cash Shoe Life to take their time to understand more about the scheme and how it can meet their long-term care needs before deciding. There's no hurry as the sign-up period only starts in 2021 for existing cohorts. Mr. Deputy Speaker, let me now turn to how Cash Shoe Life the Cash Shoe Life scheme can remain sustainable for generations of Singaporeans to come. Minister Gan can explain how long-term care insurance schemes like Elder Shoe and Cash Shoe Life are pre-funded to ensure long-term sustainability. In designing the scheme, we want to ensure that premiums paid by each generation during their working years can support their future claims when they grow old. And this minimizes intergenerational transfers so that as our population ages and our families get smaller, claims made by the older generation can be met without having the younger generation shoulder a heavier financial burden. It is an important part of ensuring long-term sustainability, especially when we are facing an aging society. Ms. Chai Yong Yong, Mr. Zaino Sapari, Mr. Ang Wei Neng and Ms. Ting Pei Ling ask why 3.3 billion in premiums for Elder Shoe were collected, and only 133 million were paid out as claims. Uh, Mr. Pritam Singh touched on this in his speech too. Uh, Mr. Leon Pereira and Mr. Peng Eng Huat also asked how premiums are determined. Uh, allow me to explain. In pre funded insurance schemes like Elder Shoe and Cash Shoe Life, premiums are collected when the policy holders are younger and working so that the fund has enough resources to meet their future claims when they grow old and are no longer paying premiums. As SMS Core mentioned earlier, the coverage is for life. It is therefore logical and necessary for the scheme to show a positive balance when policyholders are younger and less likely to be severely disabled. And this also answers Dr. Lili Neo's question on why the number of claimants are currently low. Elder shoe policyholders are still relatively young, with a median age of 52 in 2017. However, as policyholders grow older and more of them become severely disabled, the balance amount that we see today will be gradually used up to pay for their claims. This balance amount is not profit. It is to meet future liabilities. If a pre-funded scheme does not have a positive balance when its policyholders are younger, the scheme is actually in trouble. It means there will not be enough financial resources to meet future liabilities. And when policyholders grow older and more of them start to claim, the scheme will have difficulties making the payouts. 
The balance amounts for Eldershu that are currently with the three private insurers will be properly accounted for. We are working on this with the insurers. Mr. Pritam Singh asks about the statistic of one in two Singaporeans aged 65 and above could become severely disabled in their lifetime. And this is based on a mix of local and international data sources. For example, in 2016, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services estimated that 52% of Americans turning 65 in 2016 would develop a disability serious enough to require long-term care. It is important to remember that the premium calculations are based on a complex actuarial model with many factors and not just on one number. I do not intend to go through the technical details of the actuarial model in this house, but let me say that the premium pricing model was done by professional actuaries in line with internationally accepted industry standards. Some factors that they incorporated in their model include the disabled mortality rate, recovery rate, claims continuance rate, mortality rate, improvements to mortality rate, disability incidence, prevalence rate, as well as the risk profile for various cohorts. In addition, premiums for the existing cohorts need to take into account their circumstances. For example, some are on Elder Shield 300, some are on Elder Shield 400, and some are not insured at all. And we will discuss with the Council and the actuaries on how best to share information on the details and assumptions for casual life meaningfully. Mr. Zaino Sapari asks about the considerations in having the government administer casual life instead of the private insurers. Sir, the scheme will be administered by the government on a not-for-profit basis where all premiums collected and any returns from investments will remain entirely within the fund and used fully for the benefit of policyholders. I thank Mr. Leon Pereira for mentioning this point in his speech earlier. It also facilitates the provision of government subsidies and financial support to Singaporeans and provides greater flexibility for the government to make future enhancements to the scheme. There will be no change in contractual terms for Elder Shoe policyholders who choose to remain on their existing Elder Shoe 300 or 400 schemes. And this also applies to their Elder Shoe supplements. Elder Shoe policyholders will be no worse off and will continue to be covered by these insurance schemes. The government will set up an independent council by, le by legislation comprising people with relevant expertise and background. And we agree with Ms. Joan Pereira that the council should consider views from social workers, healthcare professionals and insurance experts. The council will regularly review and recommend changes in premiums and payouts guided by professional advice from independent actuaries and decide on the optimal investment strategy of the fund. The Council's recommendations will be made public. The Agency for Integrated Care, AIC, which has experience in implementing disability schemes, will work with CPF Board, which has experience in managing insurance schemes, to administer Cashew Life. CPF Board will also be the administrator of the Cashew Life Fund and will ensure that the funds are safeguarded for the benefit of policyholders the annual financial statements will be made publicly available. Dr. Chashalu and Mr. Ang Wenen ask how premiums and payouts will be adjusted. We envision the adjustment framework to work like this. Uh, if claims are lower than the amount assumed in the actual modeling and calculations, the Cash Your Life Council could recommend higher payout increases or provide policyholders with premium rebates in subsequent years. Conversely, if claims are higher than what was originally assumed in the actual modeling and calculations, the Council could recommend raising premiums or slowing down payout increases to ensure the scheme remains sustainable. So I would like to clarify that it is not what Mr. Peng Eng Huat had said earlier, that cash life premiums will be increased to pay for losses due to risky investments. Uh, that will not be the case. The government will invest the funds prudently to earn stable returns. What is not possible to predict with full accuracy are factors such as the frequency and duration of claims. 
Mr. Deputy Speaker, we have a responsibility to design cashew life so that it remains sustainable for generations to come. Singaporeans who join the scheme now and start to contribute in their working years must have assurance that should they become severely disabled, there will be enough funds to draw upon for their long-term care needs. In addition, we want to ensure that future generations will not be burdened with the cost of financing our long-term care needs when we grow old. Over the past week, since we announced further details on Cashew Life, we have heard feedback that the scheme can be rather complicated and many Singaporeans find it challenging to understand all the details. And this feedback has also been raised by several members today. We agree with the feedback. There is still some time before Cashew Life takes effect in 2020 for future cohorts and 2021 for existing cohorts. We will use this period to reach out to different groups of Singaporeans and explain to everyone the details of the scheme and how it can meet their long-term care needs. We will intensify our public education efforts on the risk of severe disability in old age and what are the available long-term care financing sources that can complement Cashew Life to support the long-term care needs of Singaporeans. And these include government subsidies for nursing home, community care, home care services, assistance schemes like Elder Fund, as well as the use of personal savings like MediSafe withdrawals for long-term care. MOH will step up our outreach and engagement efforts through mainstream and social media. We will also partner the grassroots organizations, silver generation ambassadors, youth and union leaders, financial advisors, and other government agencies such as the People's Association, CPF Board, and the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Mr. Deputy Speaker, in Mandarin, please. Zhongshan Hubao, Jiang Wei Guo Ren's long term care needs, will provide a long term care and a more comprehensive protection. In this plan, the total amount of care will be increased by 600 yuan in 2020. 国人可终身索取赔付额，应付长期护理费用，直到康复或终老。我们的长期护理系统涵盖了一系列的资助来源，包括政府津贴及协助计划、个人与家庭储蓄以及社会援助等等。终身护保所提供的赔付额。将与这些支柱发挥互补作用，帮助国人承担基本的长期护理费用。政府将提供保费津贴和经济援助，帮助国人负担保费。政府会为中低收入受保者提供高达百分之三十的保费津贴。那些人无法。负担保费的国人也可获得额外保费援助。计划推行的首五年，政府也会为一九八零年或之后出世的公民提供高达两百五十元的过费津贴。在一九七九年或之前出生的新加坡人，可以从二零二零年开始申请加入终身互保。政府。将为头两年加入终身互保的公民提供五百元至两千五百元的参与奖励。我们确保，凡是加入终身互保的国人，都不会因为付不起保费而断保。国人也能通过两项新计划来抵消长期护理费用。从二零二零年开始，三十岁以上。重度残障的国人可以从自己或配偶的保健储蓄户头，就是 MediSafe， 提取每年高达两千四百元的现款。此外，政府将设立新的乐龄关护基金 （Elder Fund）， 为重度残障的低收入公民提供每月高达两百五十元的现金资助。在我们人口老化的当下。终身互保和其他相关计划将加强我国的社会安全网，为国人的长期护理需求带来。
更健全的保障，让大家更安心。Sir, the introduction of casual life will provide better protection and assurance for Singaporeans. All future cohorts of Singaporeans will have sustainable, basic protection for their long-term care needs through casual life. And this includes vulnerable groups like low-income families and those who are already severely disabled. Through a universal risk pooling scheme like Casual Life, we can offer coverage for everyone in the future cohorts. We also want to encourage Singaporeans from the existing cohorts to join the scheme. Under Casual Life, the government will provide Singaporeans with premium subsidies and financial support so that no one will lose coverage if they face financial difficulties and are unable to pay their premiums. For those who are not able to join Casual Life, the government will help them through other schemes such as the MediSafe withdrawal for long-term care and elder fund. As our society grows older, some of us will become severely disabled and require long-term care. We have to take steps to prepare for this ahead of time when we are still young and healthy. And this is what we want to achieve with long-term care insurance schemes like Cashew Life. Together with government subsidies, personal savings and family support, Cashew Life will further strengthen our social safety net and provide Singaporeans with better protection and greater assurance when we grow old. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I support the motion.